Okay, so we're on chapter 14. Norbert, the Norwegian Ridgeback. Okay. Quirrell, however, must have been braver than they'd thought. In the weeks that followed, he did seem to be getting paler and thinner, but it didn't look as though he'd cracked yet. Every time they passed the third floor corridor, Harry, Ron and Hermione would press their ears to the door to check that Fluffy was still growling inside. Snape was sweeping about in his usual bad temper, which surely meant that the stone was still safe. Whenever Harry passed Quirrell these days, he gave him an encouraging sort of smile and Ron had started telling people off for laughing at Quirrell's stutter. Hermione, however, had more on her mind than the Philosopher's Stone. She had started drawing up revision timetables and colour coding all her notes. Harry and Ron wouldn't have minded, but she kept nagging them to do the same. Hermione, the exams are ages away. Ten weeks, Hermione snapped. That's not ages. That's like a, a second to Nicholas Flamel. Yeah, but we're not 600 years old. Ron reminded her. Anyway, what are you revising for? You already know it all. What am I revising for? Are you mad? You realise we need to pass these exams to get into the second year. They're very important. I should have started studying a month ago. I don't know what's got into me. Unfortunately, the teachers seemed to be thinking along the same lines as Hermione. They piled so much homework on them that the Easter holidays weren't nearly as much fun as the Christmas ones. It was hard to relax with Hermione next to you reciting the 12 uses of dragon's blood or practising wand movements. Moaning and yawning, Harry and Ron spent most of their free time in the library with her, trying to get through all their extra work. I'll never remember this, Ron burst out one afternoon, throwing down his quill and looking longingly out of the library window. It was the first really fine day that they'd had in months. The sky was a clear forget-me-not blue and there was a feeling in the air of summer coming. Harry, who was looking up Dittany in 100 magical herbs and fungi, didn't look up until he heard Ron say, Hagrid, what are you doing in the library? Hagrid shuffled into view, hiding something behind his back. He looked very out of place in his moleskin overcoat. Oh, just look in he said, in a shifty voice that got their interest at once. Yeah, what are you lot up to? He looked suddenly suspicious. You're not looking for Nicholas Flamel, are you? Oh, we found out who he is ages ago, said Ron impressively. And we know what that dog's guarding. It's a philosopher's... St Shh! Hagrid looked around quickly to see if anyone was listening. Don't go shouting about it. What's the matter with you? There are a few things we wanted to ask you, as a matter of fact, said Harry, about what's guarding the stone, apart from Fluffy. Shh, said Hagrid again. Listen, come and see me later. I'm not promising I'll tell you anything, mind, but don't go rabbing about it in here. Students aren't supposed to know. And they'll think I've told you. We'll see you later then, said Harry. Hagrid shuffled off. What was he hiding behind his back? said Hermione thoughtfully. Do you think it had anything to do with the stone? I'm going to see what section he was in, said Ron, who'd had enough of working. He came back a minute later with a pile of books in his arms and slammed them down on the table. Dragons, he whispered. Hagrid was looking up stuff about dragons. Look at these. Dragon species of Great Britain and Ireland, from egg to inferno, a dragon keeper's guide. Hagrid's always wanted a dragon. He told me so the first time I met him, said Harry. Yeah, but it's against the law, said Ron. Dragon breeding was outlawed by the Warlocks Convention of 1709. Everyone knows that. It's hard to stop muggles noting us, noticing us if we're keeping dragons in the back garden. Anyway, you can't tame dragons. It's dangerous. You should see the burns Charlie's got off wild ones in Romania. But there aren't wild dragons in Britain, said Harry. Well, of course there are. 
common Welsh green and Hebridean blacks. The Ministry of Magic has a job hushing them up, I can tell you. Our lot have to keep putting spells on muggles who've spotted them to make them forget. So what on earth's Hagrid up to, said Hermione. When they knocked on the door of the gamekeeper's hut an hour later, they were surprised to see that all the curtains were closed. Hagrid called, who is it? Before he let them in and then shut the door quietly behind them. It was stiflingly hot inside. Even though it was a warm day, even though, sorry, it was such a warm day, there was a blazing fire in the grate. Hagrid made them tea and offered them stoat sandwiches, which they refused. So, you wanted to ask me something? Yes, said Harry. There was no point beating about the bush. We were wondering if you could tell us what's guarding the Philosopher's Stone, apart from Fluffy. Hagrid frowned at him. Of course I can't, he said. Number one, I don't know myself. Number two, you know too much already, so I wouldn't tell you if I could. That stone's here for a good reason. It was almost stolen out of Gringotts. I suppose you've worked that out and all. Beats me how you even know about Fluffy. Oh, come on, Hagrid. You might not want to tell us, but you do know. You know something that goes on. You know everything that goes on around here, said Hermione in a warm, flattering voice. I'll read that again in a warm, flattering voice. Oh, come on, Hagrid. You might not want to tell us, but you do know. You know everything that goes on round here, said Hermione in a warm, flattering voice. Hagrid's beard twitched and they could tell that he was smiling. We only wondered who had done the guarding, really, Hermione went on. We wondered who Dumbledore had trusted enough to help him, apart from you. Hagrid's chest swelled at these last words. Harry and Ron beamed at Hermione. Well, I don't suppose it could hurt to tell you that. Well, let's see. He borrowed Fluffy from me and some of the teachers did enchantments like Professor Sprout, Professor Flitwick, Professor McGonagall. He ticked them off on his fingers. Professor Quirrell and Dumbledore himself did something, of course. Hang on, I've forgotten someone. Oh yeah, Professor Snape. Snape? Yeah, you, you're not still on about that, are you? Look, Snape helped protect the stone. He's not about you to steal it. Harry knew Ron and Hermione were thinking the same as well as he was. If Snape had been in on protecting the stone, it must have been easy to find out how the other teachers had guarded it. He probably knew everything except, it seemed, Quirrell's spell and how to get past Fluffy. You're the only one who knows how to get past Fluffy, aren't you, Hagrid? said Harry anxiously. And you wouldn't tell anyone, would you? Not even one of the teachers? Not a soul knows except me and Dumbledore, said Hagrid proudly. Well, that's something, Harry muttered to the others. Hagrid, can we have a window open? I'm boiling. I can't, Harry, sorry, said Hagrid. Harry noticed him glance at the fire. Harry looked at it too. Hagrid, what's that? But he knew already what it was. In the very heart of the fire, underneath the kettle, was a huge black egg. Ah, said Hagrid, fiddling nervously with his beard. That's, that's, uh... Where'd you get it, Hagrid? said Ron, crouching over the fire to get a closer look at the egg. Must have cost you a fortune. I, I, I won it, said Hagrid, last night. I was down in the village having a few drinks and uh, I got into a game of cards with a stranger. I think he was quite glad to get rid of it, to be honest. But what are you going to do with it? When it's hatched, said Hermione. Well, I've been doing some reading, said Hagrid, pulling a large book from under his pillow. I got this out of the library. Dragon breeding for pleasure and profit. 
It's a bit out of date, of course, but it's all in here. Keep the egg in the fire, because their mothers breathe on them, see? And when it hatches, feed it on a bucket of brandy mixed with chicken blood every half hour. And uh, see here how to recognize different eggs. What I got there's a Norwegian Ridgeback. They're rare, them. He looked very pleased with himself, but Hermione didn't. Hagrid, you live in a wooden house, she said, but Hagrid wasn't listening. He was humming merrily as he stoked the fire. Okay, end of part one.